Okay, here I've created a little demonstration for our label action examples. And basically all I did was I pulled a button out of our gallery here, so the blue pill in this case. I sized it down, and then I created some copies of it and changed their captions. Okay, so it just took a minute to set up. And the reason I'm not including source files is because I want everybody to go through and, and actually do that themselves as part of the learning process. Okay, so we've got a label object here as well that I've just put on our page. And we can actually go through and take a look at how I've initiated these uh, action examples. So, for example, our set text button, if I double click it, and we go into the actions panel in the on click tab, you'll see an action. That's where you're going to find the actions for all of the buttons that I've done. So basically when I set up a button and I use it to trigger an action, this is how I do it. I put it in the on click area of the actions tab. Okay. So we've got a label set text action here. As you can see, it's got the name of our label object here, and I've set it to banana. All right, and this is just going to demonstrate the label set text action. Again, much like wh what we did with the button object, you could use get text um, also to get the caption into a variable. Okay, so that's the set text demonstration. The next button here, I've attached a label set position action to the on click tab in the actions panel. And that's set to set the position of our label object to 240 by 50 pixels. So that's 83 pixels above where it is. So it's going to move it up on the page. Okay, I'll press OK. And I've created a corresponding button to that to restore it to its original position. If I double click that, you'll see that it's actually the exact same action. And it's just set for the original um, position. So that's the original position, 240 by 133. So it'll put it back when we push this button. Okay, we've got a disable and enable button pair here. And when I click on the disable button, you'll see in the actions tab here, we've got label set enabled false. Okay, So in other words, it's taking the label object named label1, that's our label object, and it's setting the enabled state to false. When I press, I'm going to press OK. When I press that button, it's going to disable this label object. Okay, And when I press this button, it's going to do the opposite. It's going to enable it and if I double click you can see it does that by using a label enabled action set to true okay so that's pretty simple stuff now we've got an invisible and visible button pair if I click on the invisible button you'll see it's got a label set visible action and it's pointing at our label object and it's set to false so it's going to set the visibility to false for that label object okay and I've got the opposite here with the visible uh, button basically it's the exact same action except it's set to true. Okay, So we're going to set the visibility of the label object named label1 to true using this action. Okay, So it's very basic. We've got seven buttons, we've got seven actions attached, and they all apply to this label object. If I double click my label object, you'll see I've actually gone ahead and attached a an action to the label object. I'm just going to size this up. So you can see, there you go. And it's just a dialog message box that's going to pop up and actually looks a little bit confusing because I've put the variable name in. Let's remove that. There we go. So it's just a dialog message box that's going to pop up whenever somebody clicks that label. That's going to say, notice, label was clicked. Okay, so we can use that basically just to test when that label has been clicked. And the reason I put this on there is so that you can see the effect that the disable and enable buttons will have on that label object. So let's press OK. Let's go ahead and preview our project. Now remember, when we push this first button, it's going to change the text there to banana. Okay, So you can see that works fine. That's the label set text action. Now let's take a look at the label set position actions here. Using our move up and restore button, we can actually move that label back and forth. Now you could actually use code to animate your labels and your buttons and your other objects quite seamlessly and smoothly across your page. So there's a lot of options that are available to you. If you combine that with a page timer, you can actually create a timeline which is very similar to Macromedia Flash and basically pretty well just as smooth. I've created certain animations that were very smooth. But at any rate, that's the label set position action. Okay, And in our next button pair we've got the disable and enable okay now this is really important stuff because you'll notice that when I click on my banana label here I get this notice that says label was clicked when I disable it and I click on it I no longer get that notice because those actions are disabled so this allows you a pretty crafty way to um, manipulate your labels titles subtitles and uh, text links 
basically using the label set enabled action set to true or false. So I'll enable that again and we'll set the visibility now. So using the invisible and visible buttons I can toggle the visibility of our label. Again this is very powerful. This allows you to make context sensitive menus and a, a wide variety of, of dynamic content. Now the one thing I wanted to point out here is you'll notice that these actions all work together even though they weren't specifically designed to do that they will automatically do that. So for example if I disable this I can still move it up and it stays disabled. So I can move it up and click on it I don't get the action. I can toggle the visibility when it's up here for example and disabled and uh, I can restore it and enable it and still toggle that visibility so these are indiv in individual actions that are independent of each other the visibility um, just takes into account whether it's visible or not it doesn't it doesn't uh, automatically change any of the actions that have been stacked. So this is kind of an important concept. You can go ahead and, and add and subtract these various properties from one of these objects dynamically using actions without having to worry about it interfering with another one of the actions. For example, I can disable this without having to worry about it interfering with my label set position action, which still works fine, right? Okay, so that's, uh, I'm going to close this down. So that's a demonstration of the label action examples and we've gone ahead and you should feel comfortable now setting the text dynamically for a label object um, moving a label object around using the set position label set position action or disabling enabling labels using the label set enabled action and toggling its visibility using this label set visibility action so these same concepts apply to all the other actions and I encourage you guys to go ahead and, and set something like this up even if you um, are a little bit intimidated by something too complex go ahead and just use two buttons you know set up a little pair of buttons here set up a label object go ahead and center them on a form and just um, put actions onto these buttons and try them out additionally it's important to note here that you again you you don't have to trigger these actions using a button the reason that i specifically chose a button object to trigger the actions here was so that we could carry forward the knowledge we gained in our last chapter to this chapter and again as we move forward we'll now introduce our label object and our button object into the newer demos for the uh for the next chapter and so forth okay so let's go ahead and start in on the next chapter that's label objects and hopefully you guys are feeling pretty comfortable using them now